So I'm just very briefly going to speak about the UBC wiki. Uh, we heard from James and John earlier that there are, you know, Wikipedia is one wiki and that there's you know, millions of wikis out there. UBC has its own campus-wide wiki. Uh, one thing you'll notice right away is that it looks a lot like Wikipedia. Uh, it's, it's got the sort of same interface, the same user, and that's because we're using the same software that Wikipedia uses. Uh, it's called uh, MediaWiki. It's run by the MediaWiki Foundation, and we chose it for a couple of specific reasons. And the first reason is, like Wikipedia, the approach to the software that Wikipedia runs on is a very open approach, so anyone can contribute to it. It's an open source software, and this is great for us for a couple of different reasons. Uh, the main reason is if we need to develop functionality that the wiki software doesn't have out of the box, first of all, someone probably has already developed it out there because they needed it first. Um, second, if they haven't developed it, we can sort of work with the whole community and say we need things. So we're going through that process right now. We're trying to change uh, a slight upload thing. We've been in contact with you know, developers around the world who have sort of the same interest in developing that. Uh, the second idea is that uh, having the sort of look and feel and interface of Wikipedia really helps us out. Uh, students get the idea, um, the community gets the idea of what a wiki is just by the look of it. And it's also, as they go on from UBC and are using other wikis, they're most likely going to run into at some point in their life a media wiki based wiki. Um, and so they'll have some familiarity with how that software runs. Uh, you'll notice though we have two big differences between the UBC wiki and Wikipedia. Uh, the first is we define the UBC Wiki as a collaborative space. Wikipedia has a very specific purpose, and it is an encyclopedia. If you go to Wikipedia, you can read reams of literature of what Wikipedia is not. The UBC Wiki really doesn't have a defined uh, purpose. It is just a collaborative tool, and this really came out of the need or out of viewing that um, wikis are great teaching and learning tools. Um, they're also great administrative tools. So uh, wikis have always been part or are currently part of the, the Vista software that we use for learning management systems. But as John pointed out earlier, you know, students sometimes want their contributions, their information to sort of live on beyond once that, that Vista shell gets collapsed. Um, the other sort of main difference is you'll notice we have a, a login button. The UBC Wiki is not an anonymous wiki. It is tied to your UBC common uh, campus-wide login, your CWL. Uh, so every time you log in and edit to it, we, it is you know, tied to your account. And that uh, has made a difference in the usability of the wiki. Uh, there's a lot of fear for the idea of putting your information into a wiki or putting your course into a wiki where anybody can edit. We haven't had any problems, really, of any sort of uh, vandalism. And that might be partially due to the fact that it is uh, a CWL login, but it's also, I think, goes back to, to the first wiki, uh, which was created by Ward Cunningham. And Ward Cunningham sort of had this brilliant insight that people who collaborate together tend to trust one another. And that's what we see. We see the community at UBC. They're not really out to, to, to vandalize things. They're really out to just try to improve the information they come across. So I'm just going to just talk a little bit, of, just very briefly, of how the UBC wiki is being used. And it's being used in a couple different ways. Uh, it is definitely being used for courses, and I'm just going to show a couple examples of courses being used. So to, because it's being used for different, different purposes, we've kind of created a uh, different level of organization called namespaces, uh, where we try to take uh, pages that are grouped together by sort of purpose and theme, like courses or documentation, and put them together in one area. So in the course pages, I'm just going to take a couple examples of different sort of style courses being used on the wiki. Sorry, let me get down. So here is, if I can find it, a math course from last term uh, where the instructor uh, really liked working in the wiki. It renders math language well, so he did his complete course. Uh, it was an in-person course, but put all his information here on the wiki. So you can see uh, various you know, class um, pages associated with it over here. You can see he's built a forum. Um, there's discussions going on on each pages. So it's, it's instead of using a website or a blog or, or a Vista shell to do his course, he decided to use the wiki and he found that he had great sort of, um, great sort of success in that. Another sort of example of another course being used in the wiki, uh, they wanted just sort of a nice area for students to be able to talk to each other and, and wikis are great software because anyone can come in and edit them. So here's a political science course. Uh, they were creating surveys 
Uh, here's an example of students working together uh, to create a survey. They sort of have their topic, which is media, and there's not a lot here um, besides their questions, but if you go into the discussion page, and we use a slightly different, different tool than Wikipedia's discussion pages, but you can see that they have a huge amount of conversation going on. These are all individual comments um, about what should this question be, what should another question be. Uh, finally, another good sort of example is going back to the traditional idea of writing papers. Um, and just getting back to the, the course page. And this is, this is a great example, and I think we hear a lot from instructors that, that they want the students to have more of a realistic ability of what it is to write in an academic setting. And what writing in an academic setting is, it's not handing your paper to one or two people and having it read, and then it's never seen again. It, it's putting it out there in, in a place that can be viewed by the rest of the world. Uh, so here's just an example, just really briefly, of a paper written by a group. Um, again, wikis are great for social uh, collaboration, so you can see the group's you know, done it really nice, it's put it together. You'll see here at the bottom, it's been accessed almost 2,000 times. So at least, you know, some people have found this page and said, that's a very useful page. Another just brief example of that is, is let me go into an Earth and Ocean Science course. I think it's, and you'll notice, like, unlike Wikipedia, we tried to, because we don't have a defined purpose, we try not to, to put too much emphasis on style and look. We want people to use the wiki. Uh, we want it to work for how they're using it. Uh, and we don't really necessarily need it, everything to be perfect. So you'll see pages look different. Um, people use full links rather than internal links. Uh, just another example of a paper written by a single person in the, in the UBC wiki. So again, it works well with, with multimedia. You can embed videos, you can embed MP3 files. Works well with footnotes and references. And this one's been viewed 1,500 times. So they've had a different experience of writing just for the professor, they're writing for, for a bigger community. Uh, another sort of use of the wiki is for administrative purposes. So it turns out having documentation in a wiki is a great way to run your, your uh, documentation. Instead of it living on someone's hard drive or in a shared drive, uh, you can put your documentation right into a central repository. Lots of people can come in and edit it. It can be Sort of the view, and this is I think true for Wikipedia or for any sort of document in a wiki, is a wiki is not a final product. It's a, it's a product in progress. So if you put your documentation into a wiki where anyone who has information about that documentation can edit it, that, that page will be more likely current and up to date. So we do have a documentation page. And uh, you can see like Botany IT has put their information on how to use their scanner right there because they, you know, they don't want one person to have this information on their desk or in their knowledge. They want it in a centralized place. So the UBC Wiki is also part of a larger framework and it works really well um, with this framework. And you can put your content into the UBC Wiki and you can republish it very easily in multiple places. And I'm just gonna show a quick example of that. Um, you can see our featured article is today's event. Uh, so here's a page that somebody has built. Um, that is saying share pages of the UBC Wiki. So the library uses the UBC Wiki here a lot for their content management system. So we have a page, how to find articles. How do you find articles at the library? You'll notice it has a list of topics um, that correspond to headers, they have their, their information. They can farm that out to their various websites. So here's that same information on a uh, live library site. So you'll see these topics correspond to the topics in the Wiki. The information is not living uh, in the web page is actually living in the wiki. So if they edited the wiki, the edit would show up and change on their web page. But the, the sort of genius behind that is they have p that same information in multiple places. So here's, here's that same information being pushed out to the Learning Commons website. So again, you see your same headers, that information's there. So instead of having two separate pages that must be updated and maintained, they have a centralized place and then they push that information out. So finally, I'm just gonna talk very briefly about the, the sort of what we call the main space of the UBC Wiki. And the idea behind that is probably the most similar to, to Wikipedia, but we didn't wanna repeat Wikipedia. There's no need to repeat Wikipedia. Wikipedia does what it does very well. But what we saw was there's a need for centralized information and knowledge about UBC. So the idea kinda of came, like the example we always use is the Exxon um, sequence, which is part of the RNA sequence. If you're outside UBC or if you're in UBC and you really wanna see 
what's being done at UBC around this, this RNA sequence? How do you find that information? You know, there's various faculties that might be um, touching upon that in their research. There might be different individuals who are publishing um, or doing experiments on the RNA sequence. Uh, there might be different courses that cover it. It's very hard for one person to go out and get all that information in a central spot. But it would be really easy to create that central spot where those people can come and add to it. So the UBC wiki is sort of an emerging topic, or an emerging wiki, so we're not quite at that level yet. But we do have a lot of, of um, very similar, sorry, very similar uh, style information, but a little less maybe academic in, in nature. So for example, uh, we work a lot with different partners around campus, and UBC Public Affairs is, is one of our partners. And they keep a list, they like to keep a list of you know, official UBC Twitter accounts. And it's very hard for them to know what are official UBC Twitter accounts. So what they did is they created a page called UBC Twitter Accounts. They encourage uh, you know, people who had Twitter accounts to come in and add their own Twitter accounts. And you can see that now there's a, a much better list than they were ever able to maintain before of all the various Twitter accounts here at UBC. If you look at the, the history of who's been editing this page, you'll see lots of different people have come in and added different Twitter accounts. So it's that same, same sort of idea of having a centralized place where people can add their information. You know, one of my favorite, favorite uh, ones is examples is, let me see if I can just find it, bars and pubs on campus. So it turns out if you want to find all the bars and pubs on campus, you have to go to like eight different websites because bars are, and pubs are run by AMS, they're run by private vendors, um, they're run by the Graduate Student Society. So, so again, people have built this page out um, with bars and pubs on campus. So, so it's not repeating Wikipedia, but it is sort of creating useful knowledge about UBC that doesn't exist in a centralized place. And that's... pub is closed. Yeah. So, so there you go. So, so, that, so that is sort of the UBC wiki, a uh, very brief overview. We will, you know, we're happy to talk about it if you have any questions about it. Um, find us after the presentation. We do run, if you're interested in using it, drop in uh, clinics twice a week. Um, we can provide you with information about that. And we also have a very, a various workshops on using this. So, and we hope to work more with the Media Wiki Foundation and, and try to integrate this. So, products. Um, so yeah.